Hey, welcome back to Anchored Life with Kayla. Today, we are gonna break down some barriers that get between us and finding a counselor because I've mentioned before in previous videos that I think everybody could use a counselor or a therapist to talk to. We all have hangups, we all have issues, and it's so beneficial to talk to someone who is a professional and get their outside perspective on what's going on in our lives. So let's talk about some of the things that you should look for when you're looking for a counselor. These tips are coming from my personal experience, so I hope that they are helpful to you. I think there's often a stigma when you say, I need to go for counseling, or I'm gonna go see my counselor, or does anyone know of a good counselor? So I wanna just talk about it, get it out in the open so that you don't have to feel embarrassed or ashamed about it, and just know that, hey, you're in good company. How to find a therapist that's right for you. Well, first think about what do you want help with and how do you wanna go about that? Because different counselors are good at different issues and might be more into family things or work stress or trauma, whatever it is that you wanna work through. Just kind of gather a main idea of what you wanna work on and kind of get an idea of how you wanna get there. You'll also wanna check how much the therapist costs if that's an issue for you because they might have different prices or a sliding scale depending on how much you are able to pay and sometimes through your work you might be able to get some free counseling sessions. I've been able to do that as well through my work. So it's definitely something that you would wanna look into. I've personally been to three therapists myself I don't know if that's a lot or not very many, but from what I've learned about that is don't give up if the first therapist is not the right person for you, not the right fit. We all have different needs and sometimes it's just not gonna mesh well with the first person that you see and that's okay. You can just tell yourself, okay, I tried to do something good for myself and I'm gonna keep trying and I'm gonna try somebody else. So my first therapist that I saw she was a little scary and intimidating, which is maybe not that great when you're trying to like talk about all these super personal issues. And she also gave me a lot of reading assignments and didn't really let me talk much, which is not what I had decided I wanted in the therapy. I wanted to be able to express what was going on and actually talk to someone, have some interaction instead of just going home and reading these things by myself. But maybe for someone else, that would be a good fit. So for me, I was like, okay, let's try somebody else. The second therapist I saw, she wasn't scary, but her way of going about things wasn't exactly the right fit for me. She was very into um, doing relaxation exercises and different uh, mental exercises, which I think totally have a place and a time. But when it's the only thing that you're doing, I just really wanted to dig in deep and instead of just dealing with the stress as it came, I wanted to dig down to the root issue of why I was having stress and to change my thinking about how I was doing that. So yes, I wanna be clear, it is good to have those mental exercises in your toolbox that you can use them when you need to and you will often find me sharing those kind of exercises with you guys. But it's good to have like a combination of things. So thinking about how you're thinking about things, changing those lies over to truths, and then also to have those exercises to use in the moment when you're feeling extra stressed and just need something to help de-escalate your mind. The third one I tried is the one that I have stuck with because I feel comfortable around her. She gives great evidence-based exercises and we have some really great conversations. She's got some very wise insights into my life and brings up things that I have never really thought about before and then I can deal with them, right? If things are buried down and you don't even realize that they are there in your mind and in your life, you can't deal with them, you can't heal from that. So it's so great to have someone that comes along, sees those things for what they are, points them out so that you can actually get rid of them and find healing. My counselor is also of the same faith that I am, which is really important to me because I feel like then she can understand this really large part of my life and just understand where I'm coming from. So if faith is an important part of your life, you might wanna try and find someone who also shares the same beliefs as you do. 
The only problem with my counseling situation right now is that she isn't one of the counselors that my work pays for. But for me, I decided that it was more important to find someone who was actually meeting my needs in a way that I was hoping for than um, to get it paid for. But obviously, sometimes you just can't afford to pay for a counselor because it can be expensive. So I understand that. I'm just trying to give you a um, bunch of tips on how to find the right counselor for you so that you have these things in your mind as you are looking for the right fit. How to choose a counselor or therapist can be overwhelming if you don't really know where to start looking for one. So I would suggest that if you have friends that you know who are open about talking about this kind of thing and have been going to counseling, you could ask them who they see, who they've heard is good, kind of give them a try. But I know that these things can be very difficult to talk about and sometimes you don't really want to admit to people that you need to go for counseling or that you're looking for a counselor. Maybe they don't want to tell you that they're going to a counselor. So that is why I made this video because I had a friend who was very, very open about the fact that she was going for counseling and she was on medication for her mental health and she's just so open about it. And this is kind of when I just needed somebody to kind of be there and show me that I wasn't alone in my stressful situation when I was kind of new to this whole counseling, being on medication kind of thing. So I wanted to make this video so that you know that you're not alone, so that we can just destigmatize this whole issue of going to a counselor because it is so great. Like even if you aren't having major issues and you aren't on medication for your mental health and not struggling this way, you can still benefit and be even healthier for yourself and the people around you by seeing a counselor. And that's why I'm open about it with you guys and just here to talk about mental health things so that it's not so scary. Remember, don't give up. If you try a counselor and they're not the right fit, just try another one. You are worth it. Your mental health is worth it. Everything stems from the health of your mind. So it is so crucial that you take that time and make sure that what you're thinking and how you are viewing the world is a healthy way. You are worth the time, the effort, and the money that it takes to get healing. You have so much potential. You are so, so worth it. So don't think that it's just too much effort or you're not worthwhile putting all this effort into um, to get better mental health. Make sure that you take care of yourself because the people around you, like I said, they're just gonna benefit more from having a healthier you around. And you're gonna be able to be an example to other people that they can do it too. And if you're totally stuck on trying to find a counselor, don't know where to find one, you can ask your doctor for a recommendation. You can also use the internet and see who is in your area and how well people like them. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I release new videos every single Friday. So I will see you soon.